Hi everyone, my name is Catherine, I'm the People and Wildlife Officer at the Scottish Wildlife Trust and today we're going to be taking a look at one of Scotland's most iconic marine mammals, the orca. I'm fortunate enough to have seen this animal myself from Scottish coasts and it's always special to see for new and experienced whale and dolphin watchers alike. Now unfortunately I'm not in a location where we're going to see orcas today, so for the rest of this video I'm going to use photos from previous sightings, the majority of which have been taken by amazing photographers right here in Scotland. So. Let's take a closer look at orcas. The orca is also known as the killer whale, although it is actually not a whale, but the largest member of the dolphin family, the Delphinidae. They are predators at the top of the food chain and actually get their original common name, killer whale, as they were seen killing other whales. This is not true of all orca and we'll take a look at diet later on. Despite people's fears, orcas pose no threat to humans. No wild orca has been known to have killed a person. The Gaelic name for orca means ocean wolf. Orcas are helpfully one of the most distinctive cetaceans. They are mostly black in colour, with the exception of the eye spot, the lower jaw and the side patch, which are white, and the saddle patch, which is pale grey in colour. The ventral side of their body is white. They range in size, and this varies greatly between the different communities of orcas and also is noticeably different between the sexes. Globally, adult orcas range between around 5.5 to 9.8 metres in length. Adult males are bigger than adult females, and they have a larger dorsal fin, which can be up to around 1.8 metres in height. Like other dolphin species, orcas are very social animals and live in groups. These form around family bonds led by an adult female whose offspring often stay with her for life. There are so many distinguishing features between different orca communities across the world that there are distinct recognised types of orcas, known as ecotypes. Overall, currently 10 ecotypes of Orcanus orca are recognised. The orcas that we see off the coast of Scotland belong to two of these ecotypes, known as North Atlantic Type 1 and North Atlantic Type 2. When most people think of Scottish orca, they think of the West Coast community. This group is residents of the UK and Ireland, and in Scottish waters are generally seen off the west coast and around the Hebrides, though they do range further and have on occasions come to the east coast, as was the case when these images were taken of orca in the Murray Firth in 2019. The orcas in this group are type 2, the larger of the two ecotypes found around Scotland. In terms of diet, they are known to be mammal specialists. This group is sadly considered to be in decline. While there are officially currently eight members of the West Coast community, four males and four females, only two individuals are regularly seen. These are two large adult males known as Jonco and Aquarius. As with dolphins, researchers can identify individuals using non-invasive photo ID, carefully observing the unique patterns of markings and notches on the dorsal fin to recognise individuals and study different populations. With orcas, the shape of the eye and saddle patches and markings on them can also help with identification. Jonco is very easily recognised thanks to his tall, slightly bent dorsal fin, which has a large notch near the base. Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust have been monitoring this group since 1992. In that time, the West Coast community orcas have not been known to associate with other groups and no calves have been recorded. One threat which has raised concerns for the future of this population is that of pollution. Harmful man-made chemicals called polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, are fat-soluble, meaning that they can get stored in the orca's blubber. When the orca uses these fat reserves, the PCBs can affect other parts of the body. They are known to particularly affect the production of hormones, and can therefore impact on the overall health and also the reproductive health of the animals. The most striking indication that this might be having an impact on this particular population came from a stranding in 2016 of a young female orca called Lulu. When Lulu was examined by scientists from Scottish Marine Animal Stranding Scheme, her blubber was found to contain very high levels of PCBs. Though she was an adult female, her ovaries showed she had never had a calf. While the direct cause of death was found to be entanglement in fishing rope, the level of contaminants found in the orca's body is a concern. While the West Coast community are our best known group of orcas, we do actually have plenty of other orcas around our coasts. These orcas belong to the type 1 ecotype, 
so they're smaller and either feed only on fish or have a more generalist diet that contains a mix of fish and marine mammals. These orcas are all known as the Northern Isles community. They get this name because they are largely seen around the coasts of North Mainland Scotland, Orkney and Shetland. However, their range can extend further than this, with sightings off Aberdeen, the west coast of Scotland and even the River Clyde. Some of these orcas travel more widely at different times of the year. One way in which this can be studied is by using photo ID catalogues from different countries to identify where there is a match between photos of the same individual. For example, if a fin with a unique notch is seen from Caithness in summer and Iceland in winter, then you know that it's the same orca, which means you can start to build a bigger picture about that orca's life. One project that looks into these patterns is Orca Survey Scotland, a citizen science project which logs orca sightings around Scotland that have been reported through various social media channels. These sightings are identified to groups and individuals where possible, and mapped, providing an insight into the movements of the different groups over time. With the help of photographs taken by members of the public in Scottish waters and two Icelandic whale watching companies, the project directly helped to match seven individuals from a group of Northern Isles orcas known as the 27s to Northern Iceland. Not only does this data help to gain a better understanding of Scottish orcas, but it also helps people to learn about them and increase their chance of having their own successful sighting, opening up the world of whale watching to more people. This next clip shows members of the 27s hunting seals off the coast of Shetland. I've got the 27s coming right past me. I'm near H&S. And there's a seal right on the corner as well. This could get interesting. The seal has just swelled just in front of them. Oh my god. Oh look, they're after it, they're after a seal. They're definitely after a seal. Oh my god. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Holy. Holy moly. Oh crikey. I think that I think that seal's in a whole world of trouble. Blimey. Whoa, look at this, look at these two coming in. Woo! Oh my word, I think she's got I think this one's got the seal. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, that was just incredible. There are many other ways for you to directly get involved with reporting orca sightings. Hebridean Whale and Dolphin Trust have a fantastic free app called Whale Track, which allows you to quickly record your sightings from land and sea all around Scotland. You can also use their Hebridean Whale Trail to explore whale watching sites that you could visit. Another option is to enter your records into iRecord. You could also sign up to become a volunteer with WDC Shorewatch or the Sea Watch Foundation and log your whale and dolphin watching sightings that way through carrying out regular surveys. It's also important to identify stranded and deceased individuals. If you ever see a live stranded whale, dolphin or porpoise in Scotland, please contact British Divers Marine Life Rescue. If the animal has already died, please contact Scottish Marine Animal Stranding Scheme. All of these records will help conservation organisations and scientists to gain a better understanding of the orcas around our coasts, which in turn will help with effective conservation. Thank you to Orca Survey Scotland for their help in researching this video. I hope it's given you the inspiration to get out there, watch the waves and record what you see.